in the field of hydrology, we learn about the water cycle in the school. The water cycle of what we learn in the school was first described in 1580 by Sir Bernard Palissy. And we learned in school that the water evaporates from the ocean. It forms into clouds. The clouds move. They rise. They condense. And the water falls and flows back into the ocean. And the water cycle is completed. Previously, in 7th century BC, Thales of Miletus, he said, it was the spray of the ocean which was picked up by the winds which fell into the interior as rain. People did not know how did the rain fall. So in 7th century, Thales of Miletus, he said, it was the spray of the ocean which was picked up by the winds and fell into the interior as rain. People did not know from where did the underground water come. And people believed even in the time of Plato, that when the water fell, this water flowed by a secret passage into the ocean called Astartarus. People did not know from where did the underground water come. So they thought it was the pressure of the winds on the water which forced the water into the interior. And even till as late as 17th century, people and great thinkers like Descartes believed in this theory. Even in the 19th century, people believed in the Aristotle's theory that the water evaporated from the earth and cooled in mountain caverns which fed the springs. Today we know that the underground water is due to the seepage of the rainwater. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Zumur, chapter number 39, verse number 21, seest not thou that it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who sends on water from the sky and causes it to soak in the grounds, causes springs in the ground, and then causes sown field of various colors to grow. Quran mentions in Surah Room, chapter number 30, verse number 24. It is Allah who sends on water from the sky and then gives life to the earth after it is dead. The Quran says in Surah Mu'minun, chapter number 23, verse number 18, it is we who send down water from the sky and we can store it and we can even drain it easily. The Quran says in Surah Hijar, chapter number 15, verse number 22, that we cause fecundating winds. The Arabic word used is lawaki, which is the plural of lakaha coming from lakhi which means to fecundate, which means to impregnate. We cause fecundating winds. We cause winds to impregnate. And then the water falls from the sky. And today we know that science tells us that the pollen is picked up by the winds and it impregnates the clouds. And the second type is the clouds, they join together. Then there's lightning and water falls from the sky. A similar message of hydrology and water cycle is mentioned in Surah Noor, chapter number 24, verse number 43. It is Allah who makes the clouds to move gently and then causes them to join, then makes them into a heap and then water emerges from the sky. Quran says in Surah Room, chapter number 30, verse number 48, that it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who makes the clouds to rise, then makes it into fragments and then water falls from the sky. The Quran speaks about the water cycle in great detail. The Quran says in Surah Tariq, chapter number 86, verse number 11, Vasama is atil raji, which means by the capacity of the heavens to return. Besides the sky or the heavens acting like a protected ceiling, besides reflecting all the unwanted dangerous rays back into the space, it also returns back the water evaporation. What the water evaporates from the ocean? the sky, it sends it back onto the earth. And the Quran says in Surah Nur, chapter number 24, verse number 43, that we cause water to fall from the sky, from mountains of clouds. And when we're traveling in an aeroplane, aeroplane wasn't there 14 years back, and when we look at the clouds below, we see it is like mountain of wolves. The clouds, they appear as mountains. Imagine, Quran mentions that 14 years ago. Quran 
describes the water cycle in great detail in several verses. Besides the several verses I quoted, there are many other umpteen number of verses which speak about the water cycle. It's mentioned in Surah Araf, chapter number 7, verse number 57. In Surah Rod, chapter number 13, verse number 17. In Surah Furqan, chapter number 25, verse number 40 and 49. In Surah Fatir, chapter number 35, verse number 9. In Surah Yasin, chapter number 36, verse number 34. It's mentioned in Surah Jashia, chapter number 45, verse number 5. In Surah Qaf, chapter number 50, verse number 9 and 10. It's mentioned in Surah Waqiyah, chapter number 56, verse number 67 to 70. It's mentioned in Surah Mulk, chapter number 16, verse number 30. You can go on only quoting the several verses of the Quran which speak about the water cycle. You can only give a talk on hydrology and water cycle in the Quran. 